Continuing first week, um, let's talk about why clinical database. In other words, um, why is it important? We learned about what is clinical data and what is clinical database. Well, we will learn about it um, over the whole class um, in this semester, but um, probably important question is that why is it important and why it is why why clinical database? Well, there might be uh, many good answers, but uh, one simple and good answer is that we need data to make good decisions because well, either business or um, patient care or research, um, it becomes harder and harder to make good decisions because you know, all of those limitations and um, situational well, difficulties and lack of resources, et cetera. So anyway, we need to make good decisions. And to make good decisions, um, then we need knowledge good knowledge and data is source of knowledge. Without data, um, there's no knowledge. And we will learn about the difference between data, knowledge um, later in this slide. But in short, uh, we need data to make good decisions and in any organization or business these days, data is considered as an important asset. So what is data? Um, we did not cover the definition of data so far, um, surprisingly, but the definition of data is, um, it is low fact concerning object and event. Um, so good examples of data is um, total cholesterol of 200, um, calorie intake of 2000, body mass index of 18.5. So data by themselves uh, may not convey any much, well, not nothing, but much meaning. It is just telling us um, low fact about object and event. Then what's the next step of data? As we have more data, um, well, just simply having, collecting more data doesn't necessarily it, make it become information. Um, we should process data and make it into a place into some context have meaning. So, and by doing that, um, lots of data being abstracted and turned into information. And information is meaningful. It means always something. So here's an example of what's the difference between data and information. Data, um, it literally just tells you the numbers. So for example, total cholesterol of 200, 250, or HDL um, 75 or 60, things like that. Information, it gives some meaning. So see that you know, smile facing icon um, you know, pointed by arrows, um, that smile face, ranges from 240 to 210 in total cholesterol. So what that means is that if I have total cholesterol within that range, then it means good. Um, well, it can probably mean normal cholesterol ranges, but it's not just numbers. It gives me some other additional meaning on top of those numbers of da from data. Then what is the next step of information? It is knowledge. 
uh, knowledge is by definition is collections of insights that can guide actions. In other words, knowledge is actionable. So going back to the example of information, well, I have a, let's just say I have a data of cholesterol and it's within the normal range of 210 and 240. That's good, um, but it doesn't give me, direct me to do any action. I mean, it is good to know, but no more than that in general. Um, knowledge, uh, it drives you take an action. So uh, that beta blocker drug example here is a good example. It should be always actionable. So the process of collecting data and processing data and make it into turning it into information and as more have more information it turns into knowledge. It is a typical process of building knowledge bases and as as we have more data then we have more information, more information, more knowledge. Again, the reason why we need data and database is eventually to make good decisions. But data is not free um, for free. And it could be cheap or it, it could be expensive, but the price of data should not actually be higher than the benefits of good decisions made on top of the data because we yeah, um eventually we want to save money but if, we, if the price of data is higher than the benefits then we are not probably gonna do that way so what that means is that um it's not always the more the better um the data uh, so we have to take a look into another aspect of the data. How expensive is it? Have you ever, if you ever thought about um, how how pricey or how much is healthcare data? Um, for example, if someone um, comes to me and oh, if you give you, if I give you let's just say my, all of my healthcare data, then what's the price tag you would want? Then I don't think I ever thought about it, but I don't think it will be very, very expensive. Um, in general, I, I, I am healthy, um, which is good, um, good for me. And what is irony about healthcare data is that if one person is sick, then the value of his or her health data it becomes higher because it gives more information and it becomes more expensive as that type of disease is rare uh, rather than you know popular diseases like the diabetes or hypertension um if if it is you know, rare diseases then the data is generally hard to um, acquire and it becomes more expensive. So anyway, uh, because we are learning healthcare data, um, you know, if you have any curiosity about how pricey is healthcare data, then there are many websites that are publicly available to sell the identified data, of course, they are not individual patient data. It's against law, um, but they are de identified. So, yep, for example, data um, ray.ai is one of the popular um, data marketplaces. And if you have any curiosity, then yep, take a look at this. Um, just Good to know um, there are public health research databases. Um, well, in the context of we need more data, but data is expensive. 
Um, there are publicly available data um, provided by government or some research institute uh, so that we can just, you know, go use the you know, data. Most of those cases, uh, most of cases, they are, uh, they does not ask you pay for the data. Um, it means that from the, you know, public interest perspective, government and the society believe that, you know, having good data uh, and having good data in public uh, is good thing to do. Eventually, AI doctor, uh, it always sounds interesting to me. <laughs> there are lots of um, controversies about AI doctor or robot doctor will eventually replace human doctors. Oh, I'm not going to you know, dive into that subject really, but um, one possible future, um, it, it's probably already in progress is that um, AI doctor uh, always need data and it will need more data because, well, remember that we need data to make good decisions and what AI does and the benefit of you know, AI and AI doctor is they can make good decisions in on behalf of human doctors. To do that job well, they will need much more data than human being. So that way, um, artificial intelligence is very closely related to our class. So this is the last page of this week's lecture. Um, again, um, I'm going back to the definition of clinical database um, and just repeating the definitions of it is a computer system designed to store and manage clinical data. Once I thought about changing the title of the class to healthcare database design because um, yeah, um, clinical, I feel like it is narrowing down the scope of what we are learning in this class. But still, clinical database is one of the key um, main areas still. And um, I personally like the term clinical database uh, in the sense of the reason why we learn and use clinical database is to um, support um, clinicians to provide better patient care and improve clinical processes to uh, enhance uh, patients' outcomes. So um, we have been um, walking through the very basic concepts of clinical data, healthcare data, and clinical database. And uh, next week, um, we will um, deal with um, more technical details of what it is. Thank you.